Namaste. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Adventure Yoga Weekly Tune-Up. Um, I am here on the beach at Gili Trawanagan. It is one of the three Gili Islands off the coast of Lombok in Indonesia. It's a popular place for tourists to go who are visiting Bali, which is a more popular island than Lombok. Bali is just off the coast, probably about, I think it's 35 kilometers from here. This is the biggest of the three islands and Jane and I have been here. This is our second day here and we're recovering, as my comment about today's class says, from a three-day, two-night hike out up Mount Ranjani. It's a, an active volcano on Lombok and I just did the calculation before class. I could put it in a little comment. Uh, it says that we we did an elevation change of more than 6,000 meters. So it's about 3,000 up, 3,000 down over the course of 32 kilometers and three days of hiking. It was an amazing experience, but now we're feeling it in our bodies a little bit, our calves, our quads, and our hamstrings, and man, our hip flexors really need a little bit of opening. So. That's going to be the primary focus of this week's Adventure Yoga Weekly Tune-Up. Um, I'm also hoping that I will be brave enough to stick my head on the sand and do some headstand in class today. I didn't bring my mat down because we're going to go watch sunset later and I didn't want to have my mat with me drag it around. So we'll see. The tide's out pretty far. I'll show you the, the sea after class. The tide's out pretty far, so I don't know if we're going to get a chance to jump in and rinse off before we go watch sunset. But we'll see. So it's just about time for class to start. Any other like words of wisdom or anything that I can share today, Jane? Jane's here. She's watching class. She might take part. It's pretty hot out here. Um, hi. Jane says hi. I'm too tired. She's too tired for words of wisdom today. I'm not sure the mic will pick her up. Um, we have some like pretty bad dance music in the background, but I'm really hoping that the microphone isn't going to catch that and you'll just get to enjoy maybe the sounds of the sea. It won't be as loud and dramatic as last week, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Um, okay, I'm going to guess it's 4.30, and we're going to start class. Thanks for joining me. Take a seat. I'm going to sit really close to the camera, start off, and then move back a bit so that you can see me as I move. We have this funny thing we talk about sometimes in yoga, self-love. We talk about self-love and it always makes me giggle like a teenage boy. <laughs> but the, see, <laughs> but t today's class is, is going to be a bit of a like self-love in terms of looking after our bodies, especially if you've been working hard. If you've been working in the factory, working on the farm, working to climb a mountain in the last few days, it's important that you look after yourself. And yoga is a really useful tool for looking after yourself. So today, that's going to be my focus. So it's going to be your focus. Thanks for tuning in. Namaste. Take a comfortable seat and sit up tall. Move your belly button down. If you know where your pubic bone is, move that down. This isn't a pubic bone lesson today. Draw your lower back in slightly and stretch up tall through the top of your head. Relax your eyes. You don't have to close them, but relax your eyes. Breathe through your nose. Lengthen your inhale slightly and lengthen your exhale slightly. With your next inhale, bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. Touch your thumb nails to your breastbone, your sternum, and gently spread your fingers from there. Before we begin, 
Before we begin to move, let's sing one ohm together. Exhale fully. Inhale. Bow your chin, lower your hands, lift your chin, open your eyes. Just going to see what we've got. Hey, Duck. Yeah, it is an amazing spot for yoga, isn't it? Ah, so beautiful. You got to check out last week's class as well when we were on the, the coast of Lombok. It was also so beautiful. All right. We used walking poles to hike up Rinjani the other day, so our arms got a bit of a workout and our shoulders took a lot of work. So I'm gonna start by doing a little opening of our shoulders. I'm gonna move back to what's my mat. It's just sand, but we're gonna call it my mat today. Come on to your knees and sit on your heels. Start your left arm up, bend your elbow, place your hand on your back or on the back of your head. Grab your left elbow with your right hand and pull your elbow behind your head if that's available. Push down with your hand to help move your arm bone into your shoulder socket. Push your head back, release your right hand, stretch back with your right arm, bend your elbow. And if you can clasp your fingers, clasp your fingers. If you're not wearing a shirt, well, that'll be much harder if you can't cla cla clasp your fingers. But if you're wearing a shirt and you can't clasp your fingers, just hold your hand or hold your shirt, pull on. Pull your elbows in towards each other. So left elbow down, right elbow up, push your head back. This will help open your left shoulder and stretch the front of your right shoulder. Breathe through your nose. Push your head back. Release your arms. Stretch your right arm up, bend your right elbow, place your hand between your shoulders. Grab your right elbow with your left hand, pull it in behind your head and push down to plug your arm in. Take your left arm back, reach way back, way back, bend your elbow, clasp your hands, and draw your elbows towards each other. You can probably hear those jingles passing by. It's not Santa. He's not here on holiday, although I know him. Uh, <laughs> there are horse taxis here on the Gilly Islands. There are little carts drawn by horses that the locals used to cart tourists and goods around the islands. The islands are don't allow combustion engines, so there are no cars, no combustion engine motorbikes. There are only electric scooters and very few of them at that. Mostly people get around on foot or bicycle and horse cart. Release your arms, interlace your hands in front of you, push your hands away from you and stretch your arms up. Now, a tendency here can be to stick your front ribs forward, so move them back. Work to draw your lower back in. I'm finding it tough to get my pelvis into neutral here, so one thing you can do to help is to release your hands, grab your butt, and pull the flesh of your butt back as you lean forward a little, then sit down again, sit up, and that'll help you get more into neutral. Move the front of your ribs back, Interlace your fingers the other way. So here for me, it's left finger on top of right finger. Push your hands away and stretch up. Your front ribs are gonna wanna move forward. It's natural. Move them back. Sit up tall. Look forward, stretch up. Most of our work on the weekend though was with our legs. So we're gonna do a lot of leg, hip flexor work, stretching, 
not too much strengthening because <laughs> we did a lot of that. Release your arms. Stand up. Stand into the asana with your feet hip distance apart. Before we do some stretching, we'll do still a little bit of moving, moving to get our breath going, heart rate up a little, get some more movement into our joints, into our body. Three Surya Namaskar A's. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Stay here and exhale. Move the front of your ribs back, stretch up through your thumbs. Inhale. Push down through your feet, squeeze your legs together and exhale. One more inhale. And fold forward with your exhale, Uttanasana. Bend your knees a little. Inhale, straighten your arms, stretch your spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Again, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. One more like that. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Place your hands flat, step back to plank pose, Palakasana. Inhale, stay here. Exhale, push through your hands. Inhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale, upward facing dog. Place your feet flat, pull back with your hands, curl up. Inhale, stay here. Exhale, push down through your feet. Draw your belly in slightly, lift your chest up. Exhale. Inhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees, look forward, walk or float. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Root down through your legs. Inhale, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana. Urdhva Hastasana, inhale. Uttanasana, exhale. Ardha Uttanasana, inhale. Palakasana, exhale. Stay here, inhale. Chaturangana Nasana, exhale. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, inhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Lift your pelvis up. Exhale. Stretch your heels down. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees. Look forward. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Inhale. Ardha Uttanasana. Uttanasana. Exhale. Urdhva Hastasana, inhale, Tadasana, exhale. One more Surya Namaskar A on your own. Take three breaths in your Adamukha Svanasana. We'll meet in Tadasana. If you're sandy, you can dust some sand off. A little bit of free exfoliation as well. It's nice, a little spa treatment during your yoga practice. You're welcome, Jane. <laughs> like we're going to do Parsvottanasana, something called pyramid pose. Step your left leg back, spin your heel down, and then place your hands on your hips, straighten your right leg and square your hips towards the front. Push down to the outer edge of your left foot and turn your left knee forward. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Use the inner thighs to help with that. Use your outer hips.
help keep your knees pointing forward and not turning in too much. Step your left leg forward, right leg back. Standing pyramid, we'll call this. Uttita Parsvottanasana, maybe. Pull your right hip forward, left hip back until your hips are square. Having your hands on your hips can help you find that. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. Tighten up your hips though so that your, especially your right knee doesn't turn in too much, but keeps pointing straight ahead. Straighten both legs. Lift your kneecaps to help with that. Step your right leg forward. This time, step your left leg back. Come to a lunge. Bring your fingertips to the ground. Bring your left heel over the ball of your left foot. Stretch your right knee forward over your ankle. Bring your hands onto your pelvis. Lift your torso. Stretch back through your left heel. Like you're trying to bring it straight back and to the ground. Tighten up your left knee. Straighten your right leg. Straighten your front leg, Jane. Cool. Push down through the ball of your front foot, your right leg. Lift through your right knee. Work to stretch the back of your lower right leg, calf muscle. Straighten your left leg to help stretch part of your quads. Bend your right knee, bend your left knee, step forward. Low lunge, by that I mean hands down, not back knee down. Right leg back. Stretch your right heel back. Like straight back, not turning it in like warrior one. Stretch it straight back. Tighten up your right knee. Stretch your left knee forward over your left ankle. Then bring your hands to your hips, lift your torso, and straighten your right leg, uh, left leg. It's my right, it's confusing, because we're using the face front camera, front facing camera, everything's reversed. Stretch back through your right heel, push down through the ball of your foot on your left leg. You should start to feel this in the calf muscles on your front leg. Straighten your back leg, your right leg, by engaging your knee more, and you should start to feel this, particularly in the rectus femoris, one of your quad muscles. It's the one I like to think of as the middle front of your top leg. Bend your left knee, bend your right knee, step forward. Fold forward, step your left leg back. This time, low lunge, meaning knee on the ground. Bring your left knee down. Keep your right, left toes tucked under. Bring your hands to your hips. Sometimes you'll see that it's common for people to stand with their lower back curved in a lot and their butt sticking out. That's what we call an anterior tilt of the pelvis. We want to do the opposite of that, a posterior tilt of the pelvis. I call it Netflix butt. It's like round your back a little tuck your butt underneath you and push it forward, but don't move your front knee back. So sometimes students have the tendency to do this by moving back. Don't do that, keep your knee over your ankle. Just round your butt underneath you. Push down through your pelvis, stretch your right knee forward as you push your pelvis down and forward. Keep working to do that slight rounding in the lower back, posterior tilt of the pelvis, move your tailbone under and forward. This is helping stretch one of your psoas muscles. Psoas muscles are the biggest of the hip flexors that we use them all the time, especially when you're doing things like hiking up and down a mountain. Push your pelvis down and forward more, but work to not dump into your lower back into that anterior tilt. Keep the posterior tilt. Netflix butt it. Bring your hands down. Straighten your left leg, step your left leg forward. Oh yeah, I can feel that so as. Stretch your right leg back, bring your right knee down. 
Keep your toes tucked under. Bring your hands to your pelvis. And again, move the, your belly back, round your lower back slightly, tighten up your butt, tuck your tailbone underneath you. But it's not move your pelvis back to get that shape, not move your knee back to get that shape. It's a tip at the pelvis. It's a rounding over the head of your thigh bones. Keep that work. Posterior tilt, push your pelvis down and forward. So this is working to stretch the iliopsoas muscle. It's the smaller of the psoas muscles. And it, this work with the posterior tilt, pushing your pelvis down, stretching your knee forward, and get a nice stretch there. Next, we're gonna go for the psoas major. Gotta stay here just a little bit longer. Bring your hands to the ground. Straighten your back leg. Bend your knee a little, step forward. Step your left leg back. This time, hands to your hips. Lift your torso. Stretch your arms up. Hold your left wrist with your right hand. Straighten your left leg back behind you and curl to the right. So it's like crescent pose in your upper body and that other pose we call crescent in your lower body. Stretch long through your left side. Stretch back through your left hip. This is to help get the ilios or the psoas major on the left side of your body. Don't worry, we'll get the right side. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, but stretch back through your left hip. Stretch, curl to the right to stretch your left side. Come up to center. Bring your hands to the ground. Switch sides. Change your legs. Bring your hands to your hips. Stretch your arms up, hold your right wrist with your left hand, curl to the left. Straighten your right leg back behind you, stretch back through your right hip, and curl to the left. Get a nice long stretch through your whole left side, back through your left hip. And breathe, squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, hug your left hip in. Mm, I saying left leg, but it should be your right leg. This whole mirroring thing when I'm doing the same side is confusing. Sorry, everybody. Come back to center. Bring your hands to the ground and step forward. Bring your hands to your hips. Stand up. Standing thigh stretch. This is to get thigh stretch. Let's start with left leg bent. Bend your left leg. Point your toes. Grab your foot. Pull your heel towards your outer hip. Stretch your left knee straight down. Look forward. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other to help with stability. Hug your butt in slightly to help with stability. Spread your toes. Now start to pick up your left knee. Lean forward a little to help the balance, and you can stretch your right arm out in front of you. Turn your palm in. Keep lifting your left knee. But push your foot in your hand. Pull on your foot with your hand so that you're getting more thigh stretch here. This is a version of Natarajasana, Lord of the Dance Pose. Here on uh, the Gili Throwangan, there are several Hindus, and we've seen some some temples to Shiva in people's yards. It's really nice. So it's not going to the full pose, it's just getting the thigh stretch. Release your leg, change sides. Bend your right leg, point your toes, grab the top of your foot. Move your knee back so your knees are in line with each other. Spread your toes, push your foot in your hand, pull your heel towards your outer butt. It's the technical term, outer butt. Squeeze your thighs towards each other. Hug your hips in to help with stability. Stretch your left arm out. Turn your palm in. And then with your right hand, pick your right knee up. Kick your foot back. Move your heel away. Keep picking your right knee up. Only move your chest forward for a little bit of extra stability, not to fold forward. Kick your foot in your hand. Pull on your foot with your hand so that the front of your right leg is activating and you can stretch it more. Release your leg. All right, hamstring time, sit down.
I like to start with my knees bent for Paschimottanasana because for lots of us doing Paschimottanasana full forward fold with your chest on your legs that's just not possible. We're going to do our best. Start with your knees bent, grab the outer edges of your feet, bring your chest to your thighs. From there, pull on your feet and stretch long for your spine rather than rounding your back yet. Wiggle your butt back a little bit to help get you more into a neutral pelvis. Pull on your feet, bring your chest into your thighs strongly by pulling on your feet and pulling your chest forward. Lengthen your spine more. If you're comfortable here and you want to take it a little bit further, start to move your heels away. Keep your chest on your thighs. That's going to be our marker for this pose. If you can keep your chest on your thighs and go straighter with your legs, do that. Some of you might be able to go all the way to straight. I've got a nice advantage right now. I've got a pile of sand underneath my knees, so it looks like my legs are straight. They're not actually. But it's still going to get me the hamstring stretch. So push back with the tops of your hamstrings. So push back with your buttocks, with your pelvis. Pull on your feet and lengthen through your spine. Push your heels down, push the backs of your knees down, and stretch. It's an intense pose of the back by name, but it's also an intense pose of the hamstrings by shape. Pulling on your feet, lift your head and chest, sit up, sit up fully. Move your right leg over to the right a little, bend your left leg in like tree pose. Jane, can you check that they can still see my legs? Mm -hmm. Camera. Jane's just gonna do a little tech check, make sure you guys can see my legs. <laughs> Not sure you can. Hey, there's Jane, everybody. Hi, everybody. I can't actually see the screen because it's so bright out here. I think just tilt it down think. slightly, okay. just to make sure. So we're going to do Janusha Shasana. So everybody set up with your right leg out in front. That's great, thanks. Left leg bent, foot touching the inside of your right leg. While we're walking, we're using a lot of our adductors to squeeze our legs towards each other to, to do a little bit of like the counter action of hip opening so that we're keeping our knees safe and keeping our femur bone like solidly rooted into our hip joint. So we're going to do another hamstring stretch with our right leg and get a little bit of hip opening with our left leg. Janushasana. Stretch your arms up, turn and face your right leg. Stretch your chest forward, fold forward. If you can reach your foot, hold your foot. If you can hold your leg somewhere without reaching your foot, that's great too. Pull on your leg. Stretch your chest forward and fold over your leg. Janushasana. Hug your elbows in. Keep pulling on your legs so that you can stretch your spine longer. To get more hamstring stretch on your right leg, put your heel down. Keep your heel on the ground. Push the back of your knee down. And then with your mind, because it's not much of a movement, move your butt back so that you feel a stretch in the upper back of your leg. Push your left foot into your right leg. Tighten up your left butt and stretch your left knee out to the, towards the C, I will say, to the left. Hold your foot or your leg. Lift your head and chest, straighten your arms. Stretch your arms up, sit up. Touch the ground back behind you and change sides. Public beach yoga, you get public beach volleyball yoga. Whoa, that, that's a good sport we should invent. <laughs> beach volleyball yoga. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Think of the sexy outfits we'd get to wear. Set, tree pose, bump. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll be rich. Stretch your arms up, turn and face your left leg. Stretch your chest forward, fold forward. Hold your Foot if you can, keeping your legs straight, but if you can't, just hold your legs somewhere, keeping your legs straight. Pull on your leg, pull your chest forward, 
pull your spine forward and fold over your legs. Janu Shirshasana. Again, to really work to get your hamstring stretch here, push down through your left heel. Keep it on the ground, push down through the back of your left knee, and then move your pelvis back. It's not going to stretch back much, but then you'll be able to pull your spine longer, and you should start to feel the stretch in your upper back leg more. If that doesn't work for you, you can always send me a message after class and we can talk about it and address that and see if we can help you find that stretch. Push your right foot into your left leg. Tighten up your right butt and stretch out through your right knee. Keep holding your leg, lift your head and chest, stretch your arms up, sit up, bring the soles of your feet together. Baddha Konasana, catch your toes, my, one of my favorite quotes from Mr. Iyengar. Pull your heels in towards your pelvis, push your feet together and stretch out through your knees. Hi. <laughs> you can watch this on Facebook if you like. It's live right now. It'll be up later. We can give you my chain. You can probably give her my card out of my wallet. Do you have one? Sure, probably have one in my wallet. <laughs> Tighten up your butt so that you turn your thighs out. Push your feet together and stretch out from your pelvis through your inner thighs to your knees. So it's just in that little flip up pocket there normally. No, it's great. This is that's why I, why I do a public yoga. <laughs> you can also join us if you want. <laughs> so it's sort of the opposite action that we were doing all the way up from Johnny. <laughs> it was legs together, keep your knees forward, tighten up your adductor. So here we get to stretch. Jane, stay there for a moment longer. Everyone else, place your hands on your inner thighs, push down slightly, lift your knees up. Sit on your heels. Madrasana. Don't be close. Stick your butt back, move the front of your ribs back, push your feet down. We were walking a lot, so our ankles were flexing a lot dorsal flexing. So this is like giving them a nice plantar flex, stretching the tops of your ankles, push your toes down. We do this every night after class, after class, after, after our hike, sometimes on lunch breaks. And it leads well into Virasana. If you need to sit on a book or a prop, you can grab that and sit on that. Otherwise, separate your feet so that they're at least as wide as your hips. Move the pieces of coral out of the way. And sit on the ground between your heels. Watch out for the coral because it is sharp. I don't know if you can see what's happening behind us. Stick your butt back. You can even take your hands and help pull your butt back. Move the front of your ribs back and sit up tall. That sand is gritty between the legs. The sand is gritty under your under your hamstr hamstrings and your top of your calves. It's nice. It's a little bit of exfoliation. Free spa treatment with free yoga. Namaste. I'm going to turn slightly because just about four feet in front of me, there's a concrete block. It's time for inversions. Sit on your heels rather than the ground. First, we'll do a little shoulder opener that I did while hiking. Interlace your fingers in front of you. Take your hands behind your head. Don't hug your elbows in tight, but not have your, don't have your elbows wide. So hug your elbows in some. 
Push your elbows back, move your shoulders down. Push your head back. Crystal apple, which is Indonesian for crystal apple, no joke. That means very slightly lower your chin. So there's a slight engagement, the not on the surface muscles, but deep in your throat. You won't feel it very much. Just get your deep neck flexors working, because when we hike, it's easy to stretch your head forward, that chicken head that I call iPhone neck. So we're gonna use the same shape, do Shirshasana, one. Headstand, one. Do as many of these stages as you can. Do it with me. Release your hands. Lift your butt. Same setup. Interlace your fingers in front of you. Bring your elbows shoulder distance apart. So again, it's not elbows too wide and it's not hugging your elbows in really tight. It's elbows shoulder distance apart. Let the ant crawl away. There, it's gone. And then tuck your chin. Place the top of your head on the ground on your mat so that the back of your head is touching the heels of your hands near your thumb. Tuck your toes under, straighten your leg, walk in as much as you can. Like down dog, lift up through your pelvis, walk your feet in a little more. Push down through your forearms, it's key to this work. It's not just headstand, it's really a forearm headstand. So from here, you have a few options. You can bend your left knee, lift your left knee up, and roll your left knee in the direction of your head. That might get your right leg really light so that you can bend your right knee and then squeeze your legs together and stretch your knees straight up. Once your knees are straight and your hips are open, straighten your legs. That's one option. You can do that variation. Or from your legs straight, squeeze your legs together Roll your butt in the direction of your head and bring your legs up together. Squeeze your legs together, push down through your forearms. That's one thing that we often forget here because we're so concerned with everything else. We're not really using that connection to the earth. Push through your forearms, push through your head. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Move your butt forward so that you're really opening at the front of your pelvis. Tendency here will be to do a little pike at your hip. But really works to tighten up your butt and open the front of your hip. It's a really good stretch for after hiking, after walking, after sitting at your desk all day. Because I've been working with Shirley back in Mataram. Hey Shirley, hope you're here for class. We were working on some handstand work, so we started doing some little headstand lifts to get us prepared for press up handstand. So let's do a few of those. Bring your feet close to your left elbow. So turn your torso to the left slightly. Then if this is possible for you, squeeze your legs together. Bring your feet down towards your left elbow. Bring your legs up, straighten your pelvis. And if you're like, Steven, this is friggin' insane, then take a little break, watch, and learn from observation. Turn your pelvis to the right. Bring your feet down towards your right elbow. Come back up. Two more each side. Turn to the right. No, the left. Bring your feet down towards your left elbow. Back up. Turn to the right. Oh, keep your forearms pushing down. Flex at your hip. Back up. One more each side. Here comes Santa Claus. I hope you can hear the bells or I just sound insane now. Ah, oh, saved it. Slowly, slowly, slowly lower. And child's pose. Let's do child's pose with our knees together, feet together. Sit back on your heels. Push through your hands and extra round your back here. Bring your forehead to your knees. 
stretch your erectus spinae, those big muscles on either side of your spine. Draw your belly in, round through your back. And then relax, stretch your spine long. Tuck your forehead to the sand, to the ground. Relax your elbows. Steady your breath. Slide your hands back, sit up. I know, that was a little extreme. Unexpected and extreme. Welcome to Adventure Yoga. Another nice hip extension work that I was doing while we're hiking that I like to do. And so for those of you, yeah, I know I got sandy forehead. For those of you who find it hard to straighten your legs, straighten at your hip in headstand, in handstand, this is a nice way to get some more opening there. Place your hands back behind you and they're like mini ustrasanas. Push camel pose, push your toes down, tighten up your butt, lift your pelvis up and then lift your pelvis higher. So you're working to get that opening at the front of your hip here, that extension. When you're hiking, this is a really nice one to do. It gives you a quad stretch, it gives you some extra extension at the front of your ankle, and it gives you that nice hip extension, which you don't get a lot of while you're hiking up and down mountains. Take your head back, but don't throw your head back, keep your neck working. Tighten up your butt, push your pelvis forward more, getting closer to that ustrasana shape. And then lower your pelvis, sit up. Couple of twists, a little bit of rest. Move your feet over to the left, move your pelvis to the right. Place your left foot on top of your right foot. Sit down, sit up. Hold your right knee with your left hand. Take your right hand back behind you and look over your right shoulder. For me, that gives me a beautiful view out into the sea. Sit up tall. Can I give you a little, a little brag from today? Today, Jane and I went snorkeling with sea turtles. Oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. I saw about 20 sea turtles. We've got some videos we'll post on My Five Acres Facebook page soon, so you can stay tuned for those. Sit up tall. Push a little more. Oh, look at the sea. <laughs> With an inhale, untwist. Bring your hands outside your knees. Lift your butt up. Swing your feet over to the other side, the right side. Place your right foot on top of your left foot. And then move your hips over to the left a little and sit down. Take your right hand above your left knee. Stretch your left hand back behind you and twist. Look over your left shoulder. Draw your lower back in. Sit up nice and tall. And twist. Paradvajasana. Tendency might be here for you to stick your chin forward. So move the top of your head back. Move your chin back slightly. Stretch up long through your neck as you twist. So you're twisting through your neck as well, your cervical spine. With an inhale, come back to center. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Grab the outer edges of your feet again. With your knees bent, bring your chest to your thighs. We'll just all do this modified Paschimottanasana for now. Bring your chest to your thighs. Lengthen through your spine. Pull on your feet to bring that connection between your chest and thighs to be even stronger. And then here, round your neck. Let your head relax between your thighs, between your knees. Let the back of your neck get a nice stretch. Keep pulling on your feet. Keep lengthening through your upper spine, your middle spine, your lower back. Relax your neck. There will be some rounding in your lower back because your upper neck is because your neck is rounding. That's fine. Totally natural. If that wasn't happening, that would be unnatural. Sit up tall, straighten your legs out in front of you. Place your hands beside your hips, wiggle your pelvis back. Draw your belly in, move the front of your ribs back, and sit up tall.
Don Dawson. My TFL is pretty unhappy here from all the work we did. TFL is like a big chunky muscle. It's like the muscle I, I always say when I'm touching it. If I was not vegan, I'd want to eat that. Like it feels like it would be a nice juicy bit of meat to eat. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah, it's a little disgusting. Relax. Lie down. Separate your feet. Turn your feet out. Turn your palms up. Tuck your shoulders in. And rest. Shavasana. That's our practice for today. Spend just a few minutes here. So that your body has a chance to process the work you settle in, relax your breath, relax your eyes, relax your whole body, and rest.
deepen your breath. Move your fingers and toes. Move your wrists and ankles. Stretch your arms. Stretch your legs. Wake yourself up from Shavasana. Bend your knees and roll to your right. Use your arms, press yourself up to seated, and sit up. Bring your hands to your heart, with your eyes closed, and sit up tall. Let's end as we began with one ohm. Exhale fully. Inhale. That's our practice for this week. Thanks so much for joining me. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks, Jane. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, Duk. Tony from Wicklow. Man, you know how much, I mean, you probably don't. I miss the Wicklow Wolf so much. My favorite IPA in all of Ireland. So I can't wait to come back at the end of November to uh, enjoy some more Wicklow Wolf. Thanks everybody for practicing. It's been really fun. My body feels a lot better. And I'm just gonna give you a little tour of where we are, which has become sort of my tradition before or after class on these weekly tune-ups. So let's see if we can get you some of the uh, tourists. Sorry if that was loud on the microphone. So you see there's like this little road here, people riding their bikes or pushing their bikes. It's pretty sandy. The ocean behind me. Tide is pretty far out right now, but uh, that, it was out there. Well, it's actually down the coast that way where Jane and I were with the turtles this morning. Why don't you come back behind me, Jane, and say hi? Because where you are, the sun is no bueno. We got, I got, I got like all in the shadow for a minute. Here's I Jane. Just wanted to say thank you to Gilly Eco Villas who let us use their sandy patch of beach. Gilly Indeed. Eco Villas. It's in mirror image but that's what that says didn't kick us off even though we were sort of sneaking yeah we we're totally on their technically private beach area because it is a lot flatter and it's kept clean whereas the coastline here has a lot of uh, broken coral on it from all the tourism i guess which is a little sad but uh yeah thank you thank you gilly eco villas we'll tag you in this post and thanks everybody for doing some yoga with us Bye. See you next week. Namaste.